The cool thing about IML is that it's scholarly work in a technical environment, and that's something that's really interesting. And the title of my project is Cubism and Cinema, Paralleled Explorations of the Old New Media. The old new media is the media at the beginning of the 20th century. Cubism and film were both kind of exploring their whole landscape at the same time. It was just a big exploration of what we can do within these new art forms. So those are the new media at the time. Of course now, that's old media to us. Cubism took a lot of influence from early film. So my advisor, Professor Rick Jewell, I was talking with him and I said, what films can I look at around the turn of the century that Picasso was looking at, that Brock was looking at? And he said, unfortunately, really a lot of those films are gone. So I had to go back to what comprises film. Okay, color. Of course, color back then was only black and white. So how does that compare with cubism? It actually compares a lot. Analytical cubist pictures were done in a palette of three or four colors. The whole idea is not to really let the color say anything. And it's the same thing in film. The color can't say anything. All you have is contrast. So my project goes into affirming that and also looking at movements after cubism that also take ideas from film and try to replicate the central ideas of film. The whole idea of modern art in the 20th century, from what I take of it, is that everything moves off of a tangent. I talk about the traditional influences of cubism. So Picasso got this one idea from Cezanne and film, and he said, OK, multiple perspectives. Let's just move on that tangent. Cubism is all about multiple perspectives. You look at something from this angle, and then there's a cut in the canvas drawn by a line, and then you look at something from another angle and from another angle, and then the image starts to take form the more you look at it. Film also uses multiple perspectives. It's one of the key elements of it. I looked at movements that drew from cubism, post-cubist movements. One of my favorite things to look at was Duchamp's painting of Nude Descending a Staircase. It's all about movement. Duchamp was somebody who took ideas from Edward Mybridge and those early pioneers of movement in photography. And he was somebody who really tried to add movement into art, um, something which hadn't really been done before. I made the discovery that in the subsequent movements, such as futurism, were all about movement through space on a canvas and trying to create something that's moving on a static plane. For example, Leger, he looks at technical developments. Leger and the futurists love the future and anything that glorifies human innovation. Let's see if we can get our pictures to move. This project is done in Sophie. Each image is interactive in that when you scroll over it, there's a little info on the image and comparisons and things to look at that prove a point. When you scroll over an image and something else pops up, the viewer themselves can draw the similarities. I take a look at probably one of the most revolutionary paintings of the early 20th century, and it's called Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. And a lot of people have looked at this painting and they say, okay, I know that this is an important painting, but why is it important? And people can go into textual analysis. Okay, well, it's because of this, 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 and this. But they don't really see a chronology. Here you can scroll over it and you can say, okay, here's an African mask here that Picasso had in his study, which he used as an influence for the woman at the top right. Okay, so I can see in a visual way instead of just a textual way how African art relates to the beginning of modern art. Sophie allowed me to really accentuate those, those similarities. The great thing about learning Sophie is that you're really learning truly cutting-edge technology. And that's something that's really cool is that, you know, when these kinds of programs like Sophie come out to universities and start becoming used on a regular basis for every project, I can say, oh, you know, I've been doing this since uh, 
2008, and now it's 2012 or 2013.